Let's have a look and see if that is correct for today's super catchphrase. Oh, it's a rock! <laughs> <laughs> it's a it is. If you smell, can you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> We've got a rock we mask. We've got a hot one. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a rock mask. We've got a rock mask. We've got a One of my favorite on-camera moments came during our crazy trip to Las Vegas. We were lucky enough to be flown out there to do a live podcast, to cover AEW Double or Nothing. It was mad. We only found out about it like two days before, and then suddenly me, Phil and Cleary on a plane heading to Las Vegas. We're at StarCast bothering wrestlers, and then we got to go to Double or Nothing, which of course saw the arrival of John Moxley. But enough of all that. My favourite on-camera moment came afterwards when we were doing our usual what went down sort of wrap-up of the show. And there was lots of fans buzzing around, understandably giddy after that show. And I felt someone put a belt on my shoulder. And I thought, oh, that's nice. They've got this, you know, unique replica belt that they've made for themselves. I'll present a video holding this. And then the person who came to take it off me was MMA legend Chris Bloody Cyborg, as you can probably tell if you watch the video back. I knew she was there at the event. Didn't think she'd want to pop up on What Culture Wrestling's What Went Down for Double or Nothing. And I sort of mug her off a little bit. I'm like, oh, Chris, uh, uh, what did you think of the show? And she's like, oh, yeah, I thought it was brilliant. And I go, okay, thanks. Enough of all that. Back to me now. It is just bonkers. I still can't really believe it happened. And then to add to it all, Chris Cyborg subsequently tweeted us because the video was trending on YouTube, doing loads of views and what have you. And in the spirit of Chris Jericho, she wanted to be thanked by What Culture and by myself. And egged on by Phil Chambers and Adam Cleary, before we got back on the flight to sunny Newcastle, I responded by saying, ah, come on, Chris, you're in the video for 10 seconds. We all know who the real star is. And that's how I started my feud with Chris Cyborg. Former UFC Women's Featherweight Champion, I believe current Bellator Women's Featherweight Champion. And all I'll say to conclude this is, Chris, it's been nearly two years. Why are you still ducking me? I'm going to regret that, aren't I? All right, so favourite on-screen moments and videos of mine from what culture? Working on what culture? There's plenty, as you can imagine, working here. I have seen some stupid things. We've all been part of some stupid things over the years. Three come to mind though, I'll try and wrap them off quick. I will just whistle stop on the catchphrase quiz. I'm sure plenty of people are going to mention this. But being actually part of it and winning the whole quiz, the only one that's ever happened, no big deal. What is this? Vitamins? Oh, eh. Uh, eat, say your prayers, eat your vitamins. It's the correct answer! You have completed wrestling catchphrase! Yes. It was a really good day overall. We did a load of quizzes that day that we recorded and genuinely one of the funnest days we've worked here. I think we all. I went home after that day and subsequently watched the video and just felt like it was one of the best things we ever did. Um, really, really loved it. It was just amazing. But another one that I really enjoyed doing was a random video a while back that I want to say was one of these videos called The One Time or That Time That The Undertaker Something Something Fought A Zombie, maybe. Um, I got Adam Wilborn to join me in the video for a little snippet. He was dressed as The Undertaker and I got to knee The Undertaker in the bollocks. Also, there's another story. I don't know if you've heard of this one, mm -hmm. but it's that time a short pale bloke knee The Undertaker in the bollocks. <laughs> you are. Oh! oh! Why does this keep happening to me? <laughs> There you go, good luck. And let's be honest, after all of his fake out retirements and his most recent comments, because now he's not a wrestler and he's just some totally hard old dude from the past, who doesn't want to knee The Undertaker in the bollocks? I mean, that is a once in a lifetime opportunity, but a pleasure to work with Adam Wilborn, as always, a good sport. And genuinely, I think that was quite a good bit of cafe because his testicles remained intact and he sold it like a dream. So, hey. Sign us up, Vince. Sign us up. But speaking of being a dream working with Wilborn, it was another pleasure when he, myself, and Phil Chambers, we got together and did a little bit for Mr. Cleary when he used to do the last minute rumours videos. You know, the one, the three people sitting in there, of course. They ended up with a much better crew of Sidgwick, Wilborn, and Phil. But way back when, I joined in for one and we did like a song adaptation of a U2 song. The sweetest thing. Baby's got blue skies over here. But in this summer rain cloud, you know, Finn likes to drive. 
kind of love. Oh, 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 too sweet this thing. Stupid, stupid stuff. Uh, honestly, working with these guys is an absolute treat. We love everything we get to do in the studios together. Always fun when you get to interact on videos and do little funny bits for videos or whatever. Um, we just we try our best to get as much work done as possible, but have as good of a time alongside it, which is a tough balance sometimes. Um, but it's good fun, and I think back to those three. There's there's loads we could have picked. I'm sure everybody has got about a hundred they could pick from, but those are the three that come to mind when I think about my best moments on screen. Favorite on screen memories when it comes to what culture wrestling is actually. I'm gonna talk right into the camera this time. Is actually a rather simple one because. It was when, I mean, the first one we did, I believe, I'm probably gonna get this wrong, is when it was all in, which is kind of poetic when you think about it. We went to all in, everyone going crazy, this kind of brand new promotion, but not promotion, what the hell's going to happen? And we did an ups and downs live straight after we were done outside in the parking lot. And what happened is, is that the human race saw a video camera and they were drawn to it. And then when they realized it was an ups and downs, everyone got really excited and started going crazy. And it was just like, this is great. One culture! One culture! Cheap pops. Culture, Cheap pops till the culture, end. That can get an up. This is really, really fun. And then we did it again at WrestleMania a couple of years later, and it almost exploded in one of them. In fact, that was also one of the worst on screen moments, because Phil and I both agreed we'd filmed this. I think it was for SmackDown. I think it was the ups and downs for SmackDown. We had filmed this, like, it was a real good vibe, right? It felt, it felt, felt really, really good. Up <laughs> I gotta go home tomorrow and I won't be able to get this anymore and I'll be really upset. And then surprise, surprise, because this is what the world always does. You get hullabaloo and somebody shoots their magic powers at you. The second half just vanished from the camera. And I remember we got back to the hotel room. We were both crushed. We just had to sort of redo it, but in a hotel room, which is never going to be the same as having a cool atmosphere. But that was the best because it's great to do all these videos. I know how lucky I am. I know how blessed I am. And you know, you, you always see the comments and you get nice stuff on social media, but to actually be there amongst it with real human beings saying, this is great, you know, I love the show and then participating too, it was just awesome. And I remember when I came back to the UK, I almost had this renewed vigor. I was like, oh man, you know, let's make it even better and more, uh, and more powerful than it was before. So yeah, I love that. And that's been one of the worst things about the pandemic too, because we meant to go to WrestleMania 36 and then we didn't, maybe we would go to WrestleMania 37, who the hell knows. And I was genuinely excited about doing them again. Like all you need to do is you set up a camera outside an arena, you start screaming and pointing up and down and people go, oh, and they flock, which I think is I think is just tremendous. So that's definitely that's definitely one of them. But really, I mean, there's been loads. The fact that, uh, and I'm sure that everyone feels the same, the fact that we get to come on here and run our mouths and say this stupid stuff about professional wrestling and get people caring, and I genuinely mean this from the bottom of my toes, it's the John Cena theory as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't matter whether you're booing, it doesn't matter whether you're cheering, as long as you're engaged, as long as you care, and as long as you have an opinion, that's all good with me. Like the worst is if someone goes, well, I kind of watch it, but you know, no, I don't want that. I want someone to be locked in and ready. So it would always be those live ups and downs, but I pretty much enjoy all the, the goofy and stupid stuff we do do. And once again, thank you to you. And I know all people are gonna say in the comments now is he, he, he said do do. Hello, What Culture Wrestling subscribers, Michael Sidgwick here. I tend not to appear um, in front of the camera, to be perfectly honest. I do minor technical things like write the scripts for half of the videos that you enjoy watching. Um, but I did make the odd cameo appearance on the much loved and dearly missed last minute rumors um, video series for which incidentally I'd like to um, just give Cleary a little nod of thanks for giving me the confidence to do that um, Because I hate appearing in front of a camera. Um, it's really quite difficult. It's a challenge um, It's a skill um, For which the presenters here I think deserve a little bit more respect for doing that um, So shout out to them because this is really hard, um, but I did make the odd um, Cameo appearance on that series and I just enjoyed having a good time at work with my mates. It was really, really fun. And just a specific line I remember popping at myself. So maybe I am a dick and maybe I deserve the abuse. But um, I was asked to provide a um, gag, if you like, on that interminable Baron Corbin versus Finn Balor program from like 2017, I think it was. Who cares? None of it's vivid, none of it mattered. Um, and I said that if it gets any older, Jerry Lawler will not want to touch it. And I got a big pop, huge pop. Uh, from the boys and they give me life and hopefully they give near enough 2 million of you life enough to continue to watch us 
So yeah, just again, thank you very, very much. You can't debut a new monster character. You'd steal the Crown Prince's heat. <laughs> so this is genuinely really, really hard because over the course of five years, there's just been so many ridiculous, stupid, funny moments that stand out to me. So I'm going to run through some honorable mentions and I've got to talk about everything at the Bullet Club Black Party with Tamatonga and Melo almost getting murdered by Haku and then everything that came after that as well with Tamatonga choking me out and a live podcast in Las Vegas. There goes our PG rating. Phil, stop getting choked hey, out. Hey. Everything with the Insane Things series and the Having a Giraffe skits. Love doing that. It was a fantastic end to the week getting to do that with Jules. Really, really good fun. C wrestling catchphrase. I know we bring it up all the goddamn time, but genuinely one of my favourite things we've ever done on the channel and had an absolute blast filming it and all of that isn't even to mention everything that we did with WCPW and Defiant and doing ringside camera and directing those shows and that doesn't even take into account all the things we've done abroad there's just too many it's crazy so I'm gonna talk about the channel trailer that we made uh, it came right after all the guys had left and it was pretty much the first video we'd done where we'd got sort of all of us together as a new group of people and created something and it was something I'd wanted to do for quite a long time, ripping off the uh, Attitude Era advert of the, the Super Bowl advert for WWE. And it was just so much fun. Like everyone had the little moment in it. Again, I got beaten up a lot, which I guess is a theme. Uh, not quite sure how that happens, but it's just so dumb and so fun. Just desperately trying to recreate each scene of that with whatever we had lying around in the office. And yeah, like I say, just everyone came together to create it. And then Miller doing the Vince McMahon, get it? at the end but with here's why it just all fits so well and it's just really proud of how it came out i just really really enjoy that video um although thinking about it it's like three or four years old now I should probably actually update that i wonder if we should do the one where sting beats up a child all right favorite ever on camera moment um there's been way way too many to actually recount but probably every single episode of last minute rumors we ever ever filmed because those were just the most fun thing we did and i can't remember how the video came about i think i just had nothing to do on a thursday afternoon once and there'd been loads of mad rumors about a show and i was like should i just do an article and the article did all right i was like should we do this as a video and we did this as a video but i was like i don't want to present these as like potentially new stories i need to have something in there that will like make it very clear these probably won't happen so I was like, i'll get the boys in and they can like give their opinion on these rumors. And then we sort of messed around with the format for a bit. And in the end, we settled on Phil, Wilborn and Sidrick doing them. And it became our favorite video in the whole world. We used to look forward to it like all week. And it used to, honestly, you used to get comments on those videos being like, oh God, I can't stand their fake laughing at all their jokes. Like, honestly, truly, not a single one of those laughs was fake. We didn't tell each other what we were going to say before we went in. Like, it was genuine. We just had so much fun. So much fun doing them. Like, anybody who ever thinks that that wasn't genuine, I can only assume they have no mates because that is just like, it was just us messing around with our friends, talking about the ridiculous things that come up before a wrestling show. I couldn't even pinpoint one of them. When Wilborn chucked the water in his face, they're just all good. Everything Sidgwick said, Phil having to run off and be sick during one because we've been on the Christmas party the night before. They were just the most, most fun thing in the world. I do just really quickly though, want to play a clip about my other most favorite moment that's ever happened on camera because this technically counts because we did film it. Phil, could you, could you roll the footage, please? One day in the week, I have got Becky Lynch t-shirt on. <laughs> I know, right? Sorry, did someone vote for this one? I didn't really appreciate that at the time. I just thought that was a mad thing that happened. But when I got back from New York, my girlfriend sat me down and she was like, do you even do you even understand how insane it is that you've gone on this career path completely accidentally, which has led you to a point where you are on stage at a sold out off Broadway stand up comedy show. And everybody there not only knows who you are, but is enjoying what you're doing enough to just whoop and cheer for you using a zip. Do you have any idea how rare and special that is? And I was like, 
Yeah, all right, that is, that is kind of crazy. Favorite on camera memory? This is such a tough question because legitimately, and this sounds like, you know, some lamey, lamey nonsense, everything's kind of fun from voiceovers to news videos, everything else in between, but I'm gonna go with the first news video that myself and Adam Nicholas did on the morning after we arrived in New York City for the WrestleMania 35 trip, April 2019. More for the adventure around the video than the actual video itself, although the video is, is, is pretty good because we're standing in front of a massive aircraft carrier that we randomly found just sitting around in Manhattan in the water. Um, but the whole morning was this just this ridiculous adventure from three guys who had done no research whatsoever into what it was going to be like recording outside in New York in spring when it's cold and it's windy as hell. We had to end up after about, I don't know, like an hour of setting the damn camera up. We had to hide it behind a bush so that the wind wouldn't mess with everything. The microphones are like... <laughs> The whole way through, there's people walking past going, what the hell are those nerds doing over there by that aircraft carrier? But it's probably one of the most unique news videos we've ever done for those circumstances. And myself and Adam Nicholas simultaneously on camera bring out both the best and worst in each other. These things are absolute train wrecks, but they're glorious train wrecks. And we had a lot of fun. The whole trip was tremendous. And there are certainly other moments from the trip that I could throw in as my favorite on-camera memory, or indeed my behind the scenes memory. But we've already done that. I'm going with that news video. It was a disaster, but a beautiful disaster. Hello everyone, Perennial Egg Jules here. Um, so, when it comes to my favorite on-camera thing for What Culture Wrestling, it has to be hands down any of the having a giraffe skits from insane things happening in wrestling. Seriously, they were the most fun things that I've ever had to film because me and Phil, we get on so well. So we were just kind of bouncing off each other with tons of different ideas, different jokes, little ad-libbed bits, just to try and make the other person laugh. But if I was to pick one moment out of the cavalcade of craziness that was those mini movies, it has to be the bit where he destroyed cardboard Simon Miller. If you've not seen it, Basically what happens is we're having this uh, ongoing narrative where I'm trying to kill all of the other What Culture personalities because of the fact that they made fun of the giraffe head that I used to wear on the show. And so Cardboard Miller was the next one in line and <laughs> Phil just walks in. And the plan was just to push the cardboard, uh, the cutout of Simon Miller over and have him like die. But Phil went in there and like lamped him so hard it nearly ripped the head off of him. And it just went down, the noise it made was just so brilliant. Oh, that's it, you big bone prick, me and my boy. Ah! I wasn't done monologuing, man. And then the reaction of just being like, he was made of cardboard, you've ruined the green screen being the end joke. I just, we walked away from that, just going, this is possibly the silliest thing we've ever filmed. And therefore it was the best thing we'd ever filmed. So yeah, more of those please. If I could ever get back to doing skits on the wrestling channel with Phil, that would be the dream come true. But alas and alack, insane things ain't coming back. Or is it? Probably not. Right, anyway, cheers. Get off my friend! God. You, 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 what, what have you done? I thought this was what you wanted. I didn't want this. I can't believe you, man. What have you done? I've killed someone. No, not how you broke the fucking green screen. He's made a cardboard. <laughs> you silly tit. Are you having a